Hello, students. Let's learn English together. I'm Ifis Alaudin. Today, we're going to explore a very interesting poem. A poem is a piece of writing that uses the sound and meaning of words to show feelings, thoughts, and ideas. The title of the poem is Newsbreak. It's written by Max Fetchen. This particular poem tells the story of a child who is afraid to tell the parent about his result. Instead of telling the parent, he started to behave differently by being nice to make up to the bad news. The child realizes that his report card may not please the parent. Hence, he tries to be extra nice so that the parent will not be angry. Here's our learning objective for today. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to recite the poem with the correct pronunciation and intonation, explain the structure and summary of the poem, describe the persona, setting, tone, and mood of the poem, list down the themes and moral values of the poem, and lastly, I hope you'll be able to respond imaginatively and intellect intelligently to the poem. Let's start by getting to know the author of the poem, Max Fetchen. Max Fetchen was born in 1920 at Anglevale in South Australian Plains. Max Fetchen was a words craftsman. He was equally respected in worlds of literature and journalism. Max began writing for children in 1966. When asked in an interview in 2010 why he took up writing for children, he reasoned because they are the most challenging audience in the world and I'm very fond of them and they're fond of me. Now, before we begin our lesson, let's see some breaking news headline on the media. Those are some examples of breaking news headlines. Do you know what is the meaning of news break? What is the relation between news break and a child's behavior? The title, news break means a newsworthy event or accident. In this poem, the poet uses the title to indicate that the boy is doing something unusual showing a change in his behavior. Okay, did you clean the room? I'm going to check. Oh, she did. But she wouldn't have done the laundry though. What is going on? Bathrooms probably filthy. <laughs> Smells like bleach. No dust. Did you fold all the blankets? She mowed the lawn. All right, you did something. You are trying to cover up with all this, huh? I won't buy it. Nothing gets past me, okay? Why did you do this? Well, that's a funny one. Have you ever been in that kind of situation before? How do you tell your parents when you have done something wrong? I'm sure parents would usually notice if we suddenly behave differently for whatever reason it is. Now, it's time to recite the poem together with me.
now? Why so loving, darling? And why the sudden kiss? You'd help me with some little jobs? For goodness sake, what's this? Your face is clean for once, dear. Your clothes without a crease. You save your luncheon money. Well, what does never cease? No dropping of your school books. No shrieking, childish treble. Today, you are a lamb. Love, where yesterday, a rebel. But surely you're some stranger, no rage or hullabaloo. Come closer, let me look, dear. Can this be really you? Now, were you struck by lightning? Or were you stunned at sport? Ah, now I see the reason. You've brought your school report. Congratulations! We finished reading the poem. Okay, before we analyze the meaning of the poem, let's look at the poem structure. The poem comprises five stanzas with four lines each, and it has the rhyme scheme A, B, C, B. The style is simple and direct. The language and choice of words used is simple, everyday language easy to understand as we can relate it to what a child does. The point of view. The point of view is based on the persona. The persona is the speaker in the poem. The I, whereas the poet is the person who wrote the poem. This poem is written from the first person point of view because the pronoun I and your are used. Do you know who is the persona in the poem? A persona is a character taken on by a poet to speak in a first-person poem. In this poem, the persona is a parent, a mother or a father, who is puzzled to see the child's sudden change of behaviour. The setting of the poem can be divided into two parts, which are time and place. The time setting of this poem is not specific because no time frame is mentioned, although it can be inferred that the child has just returned home from school. The place setting of this poem took place at home. Now, let's study the meaning of each stanza. In the first stanza, the parent is wondering why his child's behaviour is suddenly so loving. The child even gives a kiss to the parent and the parent is bewildered that the child offers help. The phrase, Now why so loving, darling? And why the sudden kiss is an imagery used by the poet to portray the image of a loving son hugging a very surprised mother. What are the little jobs? Some people call odd jobs the small jobs of different types, especially those that involve repairing or cleaning things. For example, washing dishes, sweeping the floor, and wiping the table. So in this stanza, the parent desperately wants to know the reason for the child's sudden change. In the second stanza, the parent is surprised to see that the child's face is clean. The child's clothes are also neat, as if it has been ironed and has no crumples. The parent is also shocked to know that the child did not spend his money for lunch that day as he usually does. The parent is astonished with all the surprises that he is getting and thinks when it would all end. In this stanza, the poet uses symbolism 
The phrase, your face is clean, symbolizes the child looking sweet and lovable. Whereas, your clothes without a crease symbolizes an obedient child who usually standing upright and obediently waiting for his mother. In the next stanza, or stanza 3, the parent is surprised that the child did not drop his school books as he returns home. The child does not scream or show any outburst of anger. The parent praises the child for his good behaviour that day as the child acts like a gentle lamb. When just the previous day, he was rebellious and going against his parent. In this stanza, the poet uses metaphor to describe the behaviour of the child. Today you're a lamb shows innocence and obedience when the child is compared to a lamb. And where yesterday a rebel shows disobedience and defiance when the child is said to be a rebel. In stanza 4, the parent feels as if the child is a stranger to him, like a new person. Hullabaloo means a lot of noise and fuss. The imagery, no rage or hullabaloo, gives the image of a noisy, crying child throwing tantrums. But the child does not show any anger or any emotional disturbance on that day. Therefore, the parent asks the child to come closer so that he can see his child better as he wonders if that is really his child. That brings us to the last stanza, stanza 5. The poet used hyperbole, an outrageous exaggeration used for effect in the poem. Now, were you struck by lightning? Is an exaggeration of the parent's feeling with regards to the reason for the change in his behaviour. He also wonders whether his child had injured during sports that has made him temporarily unable to react. Finally, he understands the real reason for the change as he noticed that he, the child has brought his school progress report which must have been filled with bad grades. Now, let's look at the other elements of the poem. The general tone of this poem is light-hearted and a little humorous. In the poem, the persona is surprised and astonished with the child's behaviour. The poem creates a reflective mood as the persona compares the child's past and present behaviour. The reader is filled with curiosity at the beginning of the poem but will most certainly laugh when they read the last sentence. The theme in a story or poem is its underlying message or the big idea. It is the belief that the author tries to convey in the writing. It may be stated explicitly or it may be implied. There are several themes highlighted in this poem. Let's study all of them. The first theme of this poem is Honesty is the best policy. We should be honest with our parents. We must tell them the truth so that we can gain respect and trust from them. Without trust, life would be miserable. Parents will become suspicious in everything we do. This will lead to arguments and lack of trust. It is more effective if the child behaves in honest and productive ways. Learning to be honest and eliminating the need for lies can help to clean up one's conscience and his relationship with others. 
The second theme of this poem is creativity has no boundaries. The child is indeed creative. In order not to get a scolding from his parent, he does all sorts of things to please him or her. Let a child's creativity flow. However, the world is too overwhelming for a young child to bloom in his own ways. Therefore, always be at his or her side to provide support and guidance. Lastly, the theme of this poem is having an ulterior motive. The child in the poem is rather sly. He is behaving well for a reason. He has brought home his report card, which may contain bad grades. Since he does not want to make his parents angry, he tries to win the parents' heart by behaving well. So, from what you understand about the poem, what are the important lessons that you can apply in your life? In literature, we call this element moral values. Moral values are standard accepted principles of life. It relates to the principles of right and wrong of a human character. It is also the standards of good and evil which govern a person's behaviour and choices. There are several moral values highlighted in this poem. The first moral value of this poem is we must try to behave well at all times and not only on certain circumstances. Next, we must have the courage to face the consequences of our actions instead of giving excuses. And lastly, parents should try to understand their children if they hide their reason for behaving differently. Now, it's time to check your understanding about the poem. We'll start with a simple exercise. First, match the words with the pictures given. Do you get it all right? Well done! Next one. Based on the explanation of the poem, match the words with a suitable meaning. Rebel Lamb Clean Shrieking Luncheon money Very tidy Spend money on Lunch break Mild mannered Gentle Go against or disobedient Screaming or squealing Rebel Go against or disobedient Lamb Mild mannered Gentle Clean Very tidy Shrieking Screaming or squealing Luncheon money Spend money for lunch break Great! Now let's move on to the next activity List the differences in the child's behaviour after he obtains the school report You can write down your answer on a piece of paper first and check your answers later now, let's see if you manage to get the same answers or at least similar like mine. The child is obedient like a lamb today. The child does not drop any of his school books on the floor. The child helps 
to do some little chores. The child's clothes are neat without any crease. The child is like a stranger today. Congratulations for completing the task. Now, for the last part, we're going to play Wheel of Fortune to choose the questions that you need to answer. I'm going to spin this wheel and let's see what question we'll get. All right, students. The question for the blue card is... Why do you think the child does the things mentioned in the poem before showing the school report? Give a reason. Let's watch a sample answer from our friend here. It is because the child does not want to be punished and he does the things that the parents have always wanted him to do. When we did something wrong, we might feel guilty and will do something good to make it up for the wrong deeds. Now, let's move on to the next one. The question for the red card is... Do you think the parent is angry with the child? No, the parent feels the love for the child. The words darling, love and dear in the poem shows this. I think the parent is just bewildered because he or she is totally unable to understand the change in the boy's behaviour. Let's spin the wheel one more time. Here's the question. If you are a parent, how would you react after knowing about the bad grades in your child's school report card? If I were the parent in this poem, I would teach my child to be honest. After that, I'll scold her for getting poor results and I'd ask her to study hard and improve her result in the next exam. Well, do you agree with the answer? Let's do the last question for this activity. Imagine you return home with a bad report card. Suggest two ways to avoid yourself from being scolded by your parents. Have you got any ideas to answer the question? I bet you do. Let's watch our friend's response here. I'll try to make my parents laugh by making jokes to reduce my parents' level of stress when looking at my bad grades. Or, on the way home, I'll get some presents for my parents to say thank you for still believing in me despite of my failure. If I don't have money to do that, I'll cook lunch or dinner to show that I'm sorry. This poem demonstrates what a small child has to do just to please his parents before the parents take any action against him. All the questions that you have answered just now are the HOTS question. The questions are meant to test your high-order thinking skills. I hope you are able to respond imaginatively and intelligently to the poem. Well, now, we've reached the end of our lesson. I hope you enjoy exploring the poem News Break and learn new things from this lesson. Till next time!
Bye-bye.